So we've briefly touched on grooves in Ableton as we went through both the clip view and the browser, but now it's time to take a look at what grooves actually do. So grooves affect the timing and velocity of audio and MIDI clips alike. Applying a groove will actually manipulate warp markers in an audio clip and the timing of notes in a MIDI clip. So we can actually use them to apply different rhythm elements to each of our clips within Ableton and we can actually extract grooves out of clips and apply them to other clips to get them to rhythmically match. So to see what I'm talking about here, let's actually open up the groove pool. Now anytime a groove is loaded onto any clip in Ableton, the groove will appear in this groove pool and we'll be able to edit some of its parameters. So let's go ahead and go into this chords track and we will load a groove here in the clip view using the hot swap button. I'll just choose hip hop and we'll just choose the first one available to us. Now alternatively we'll drag another one in there just to show you that you can also click and drag grooves into the groove pool. So here in the groove pool, we can choose to save a groove once we have edited its parameters, and we can also swap this groove with another from the library. So let's go ahead and swap this for, let's say, Hip Hop 3. The base option here will actually choose the main subdivision that our groove will be acting on. The quantize option will actually quantize our clip before initiating the actual groove on that clip. So set to zero, no prior quantization to the groove is occurring, and set to 100%, we are fully quantizing our clip before we send it off to be manipulated by the groove. The timing option determines how much timing will be affected by our specific groove. So if we turn that up to 100%, then all of the timing information from our groove will actually be incorporated to the clips that we apply the groove to. The random option will incorporate some random timing elements within the groove itself. The velocity option will determine how much the notes are affected and adjusted based on the groove's velocity information. Now this slider can also go into negative values, and when this happens, it will actually reverse the groove's velocity information, meaning that loud notes will become quiet, and vice versa. Let's go ahead and reset that to zero. Our last option is the global amount, and when grooves are loaded into our set, this parameter will also be available to us in the control bar here next to the metronome and the time signature. The global amount sets the intensity for timing, random, and velocity changes that the grooves will apply to our clips. So this parameter affects all grooves within the groove pool, and notice that we can go to values over 100%. This means that we can make an even more exaggerated effect of our grooves on the clips that they are loaded to. Let's go ahead and reset that back to 100. Now, as you can see here, our first groove, Hip Hop 3, actually has blue sliders, and our second groove, and last one in the groove pool, Hip Hop 1, has grayed out sliders. And that is because Hip Hop 1 is not actually an active groove in the set at the moment. So anytime a groove is not being used on any clips within the set, it will appear grayed out within the groove pool. Now if we look at our groove options on a clip per clip basis, you'll see that we can hot swap the groove or we can select the groove from the actual groove pool. And again, once we have selected a groove, its sliders will appear blue. The last option we have pertaining to grooves within the clip view is this commit option. Now if I were to press this commit option, our groove would disappear from our selector here because it would actually be committed to the clip. And this means that warp markers would be set and timing variations would also be incorporated into our clip. And so our clip would actually have the groove baked into its actual warp and velocity settings. That way, if we were to save the actual clip, it would basically be like the groove is already on it 
as it has been rendered in a sense into the clip so let's go ahead and commit this groove and you'll see a whole bunch of warp markers just appeared indicating that our groove is now active on the clip and now if we take a look at our groove pool you'll see that both grooves are indicated as being inactive so in addition to actually committing grooves we can extract grooves from specific clips. So here I clicked on this base clip and I'm gonna right click and choose to extract groove. And so now Ableton is processing the warping and velocity information needed to extract that specific groove. And we will actually see it in the groove pool once it is done processing. So here is our new groove in the groove pool and we can actually choose to save that to our user library if we so desired. Now this process of extracting and committing grooves is actually a very useful technique, especially for when we have multiple rhythm parts or multiple layers of a single source that we want to match together. So we can extract a groove from one of them and apply it to another in order to get their timing and velocity on the same page. Not only can grooves be extracted, but existing grooves can also be edited in empty MIDI tracks. So let's go ahead and drag this groove that we just extracted into an empty MIDI track. And you'll see here that we have timing and velocity information that we can now edit. Once you're happy with the edits that you've made, you can actually go ahead and extract the groove from the clip just like we did before. And now we have access to this custom groove within the groove pool. So definitely utilize grooves wherever possible and don't be afraid to save custom made grooves to your library for use in later projects.